Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a teacher, a fellow ADHDer, and a certified life coach. And I started this podcast with the intention of giving ADHDers everywhere a sense of understanding of this super complex neurodevelopmental disorder and to create a fabulous and safe place to share the struggles, the wins, and the newest researched strategies to help you be the you that you've always dreamed to be. Are you ready? Let's get started. One of the other strategies that's also kind of a weakness if we don't use it well is our hyperfocus. Hyperfocus is something I'll probably do a deep dive on in a different episode, but it's basically our ability to like zone everything else out, even like the need to go to the bathroom, the need to drink water, and things like that um, to get tasks done. Usually this has to do with things we're interested in and things we'd like to do. So managing that hyper focus is definitely key. And like I said, I'll probably do a deep dive on this at a different episode. In this episode, we're going to go over hyper focus, what it is, and going with the flow. So what is hyper focus? Well, <laughs> divine by the doctors on verywellmind.com, which is linked in the show notes. It is when someone is so immersed in a task that they are oblivious to everything else, external and internal factors. In a normal person, this just looks like super focused without getting distracted. Um, In my experience, when this happens for ADHDers, I uh, don't even go to the bathroom. Like, it's hard to meet my own basic needs. It's like all of a sudden, I'm three, four years old and I'm starving or super thirsty or all of a sudden I have to run to the bathroom, literally run to the bathroom. So hyperfocus can be useful, but sometimes it's not so pretty. Not all ADHDers experience hyperfocus. In my research, I found that it mostly coincides with the um, hyperactive and combined types. But even then, not all ADHDers experience hyperfocus in the same way. If you're listening and thinking, well, hey, what a great symptom. Think again, because just like symptoms of anything else, you don't just pull them out of your handy dandy notebook to use the symptom to your convenience or advantage. No, (laughs) it does not work that way. It's more like a pull that just happens. And before you know it, you're sucked down and you can't really climb out. In ADHDers, hyperfocus does look like what I stated, but it's intense to the point of lost time, hello time blindness, and forgetting to eat sleep, or even like go to the bathroom. And like I said, we can't just pull it out and use it conveniently. Usually it comes along while completing one task, then getting distracted by something else and getting completely immersed in the other task only to not even remember about the first task because of how sidetracked you got. I know, this might be a little bit confusing, so let me paint you a picture with a real-life story. Um, I was in my apartment at the time, and I was struggling with depression. (laughs) Comes along with ADHD. We'll talk a little bit about that in the next episode. So I got a jolt of energy one day, and so I decided to get back on track with my paperwork for my teaching job. Well, as I was doing that, I noticed the dishes then the garbage, and so on. I got so distracted and hyper-focused in a procrastivity task of cleaning that I deep cleaned the apartment and I never caught up with my lesson planning. So that is just a small painted picture of what it looks like. Sometimes it can look like somebody um, being very, very um, 
editorial about their podcast or their article or their paper or your homework or whatever it is. So you just keep thinking, I'm going to do one more thing. Something I have found that really helps with this is self-talk. Now, when I first heard that, I'm like, wait, what? I teach my preschoolers how to do that. Adults? Like, it, it works for adults? So I tried it, and it really does. Talking to myself and being like, Carmen, it's time to end this task. Even giving myself, like, a verbal five-minute warning, like I would do for my preschoolers, really works for me. Because I'm not just saying it in my brain. Because my brain can alter it. Remember, I did speak about this before. Our situations create emotions, which in turn have a thought related to them. It's either thought or emotion that comes first. And in turn, those create our actions or inaction, which create our results. So I am always talking to myself out loud because your brain can kind of change the way you think about something. You could think about something and be like, oh, that sounds great. And then you say it out loud and your brain's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, that's, that's not what we made it in your brain. So self-talk out loud, like really, really works. Now I want to talk about, um, hyper focus versus flow state. Being in a flow state is when you can channel your focus when you have the skills to pull away from the task or activity without becoming fearful that you might stop the focus on said activity. This has to do with our um, emotional hyperarousal and our cognitive distortions. So that all or nothing thinking, like if I don't get it done now, I'm not going to get it done. So how much is too much? When that fear of stopping the task and the fear of not being able to restart the task with the same level of focus, when those both arise together and we just keep doing one more thing until the task or activity is like well beyond finished, well then we're engaging in this type of hyper focus that's forgetting to eat, sleep, hydrate, and self-care. Like just literally caring for yourself. We are using all of the fuel in our brains to think. So we're depleting the energy source, which is glucose, causing adrenaline to rush through our brain, which is also cortisol, a stress hormone, to keep us going. So instead of using fuel anymore, that glucose, we are using a stress hormone. So if you're a chronic hyperfocuser, this can turn really unhealthy very quickly. It could turn into panic disorders, anxiety disorders, and sometimes tendencies like mania. Um, I'm not saying that you would be bipolar, but mania can happen if you let this cortisol take over too many times in a row. Your brain gets used to it, and then before you know it, you're ra- really, rarely sleeping. One of the biggest strategies that I use to cope with hyperfocus or kind of like prevent it is making sure that my basic needs are met when I sit down to do a task. So go to the bathroom, make sure you eat, make sure you've showered, make sure you've done all those things that we've talked about before, those non-negotiables, the things that you need before you start an activity. And then transitioning out of hyperfocus is hard for so many reasons. Um... That fear of not being able to get back in the flow state and your brain has been now flooded with dopamine from that said task. So let me give you an example. Say you're writing a paper and it needs to be like, I don't know, 20 pages from what I remember in college, like at least at the end of the year, there was one like 20-ish page paper. So say you get five papers, five pages done, maybe 10 And you have this high dopamine from completion of 10 out of 20 pages. So trying to transition to a lower dopamine task requires a ton of emotional regulation, impulse control, and metacognition, a.k.a. the awareness of your own thoughts. As you and I both know, these skills do not come naturally to the ADHD brain. Not at all. 
So we have to try to manufacture them and we have to use strategies that are super visual to make our brains stop. Another tip to help make the transitions smoother includes creating a schedule with boundaries and time restrictions that you make very apparent with alarms and calendar reminders. If you are somebody who is you ignore alarms a lot, ask a friend or a loved one to give you a quick reminder call or text. To maximize this hyperactivity, create your to-do list and then prioritize it and then give time to each task. Honoring that time and honoring when the time is up. Another tip for transitioning out of hyperfocus is using the self-talk to move to a task that requires little to no brain power, such as taking a short walk, watching a TV show, using music or a visual transition, such as a phone break or reading a book. Another tip is there are water bottles that like light up when they haven't been like drank in such and such like amount of time. They're not that expensive. I'm pretty sure you can get them on Amazon. Um, Those are really good for times of focus to help remind you to drink something. I also keep a snack or two or five in my desk so that I don't have to move from where I'm working in order to eat. And then alarm clocks that light up and seriously make sure there are clocks everywhere. Like not just on your phone because that screen goes black. I have a big digital clock in my bedroom. I have a little one downstairs and I use that one as a timer and it beeps very obnoxiously when I'm supposed to be done with the task and that actually snaps my brain right out of it. A lot of this has to do with self-care and regulating our emotions and our own bodies. We don't have those skills naturally so it takes practice if you have any questions or you want any support come find me on instagram at at authentically adhd underscore carmen i race and let's chat about it i can help you out i can answer a few questions you have i've struggled with hyper focus i've struggled with not sleeping and i've struggled from depressive episodes that sometimes lead into this unhealthy hyperfocus. Usually now I'm able to channel it in a way that is useful for me and for my health. So if you would like any of those strategies or you just have a question about any of these podcasts, go ahead and find me on Instagram and shoot me a chat. Let's be friends. Until the next one, stay authentic, my friends. Hey listener, if you're enjoying this show, you should totally subscribe to it so that you can see when new episodes pop right up into your feed. In Spotify, if you go up at the top and hit click follow, it'll notify you every time there's a new episode. Then, really quick, as you're listening to this, right under the follow little um, bubble, there's a rating bubble. If you could just rate this podcast and give some feedback, possibly maybe answer the poll question that's underneath the podcast, I would really, really appreciate it. I hope that you're enjoying whatever you're doing today or tonight. Have a great one.